Hey, good afternoon. It's Valerie Holdren. Um, it is Sunday afternoon, and um, I decided to try and come up with a, another something new, and um, I've decided to try and make a double chocolate soap. Um, and with that, I'm, I mean, um, I'll be using a large percentage of cocoa butter um, and some of it hopefully will come through. Um, I'm not going to use any scent unless I use a little orange or tangerine, something at the end, but I want to see how strongly the cocoa butter comes through. Um, the colors that I'm going to be using is just a natural base which will probably, with the large percentage of cocoa butter that I have in here, will probably be a beige, kind of a tan color. Um, and I am using some organic cocoa powder. Um, and what I did was I took some of my warmed oils out of here, about a tablespoon, tablespoon and a half, and dissolved the cocoa powder in it and it is completely lump free um, and I only used about a half of a tablespoon because I don't want my batter to be my lather to be too dark on this soap and I expect to get a little bit of a, a browner lather but hopefully not too much like I've had in the past um, what else? I'm going to, as I said, the, the cocoa powder is going to be my color, and I'm going to do a chopstick swirl with that. I'm going to separate it off into its own cup. Um, I'm super fatting today with it's 5% up front and an additional 2% after, and Half of that is with extra cocoa butter to help get more of this chocolatey cocoa scent. And I'm trying a different oil today. Um, I came across several of the lotion recipes call for shea oil. And I've never used shea oil, but from the things that I have read, it says that it is very luxurious. And you don't have to have a whole lot when you do lotion, so I went ahead and ordered it. It was a little pricey, but I am going to add um, 0.30 ounces of the Shea Oil with the 0.30 ounces of the cocoa butter as my additional super fat. So I'm anxious to try that um, and see what it feels like. So... My oils have just a little ways further to go before I start, and um, I'll bring you back for that. Okay, we're back, and um, I have on my gloves, my long sleeves, my goggles are going on now. My oils are at 177, and my lye is at 184, so, and in here I have my Tussa Silk. And in my warm oils, I have, as usual, my colloidal oatmeal and kale and clay. So I'm just going to pour this down the shaft of the stick blender so that it doesn't splash up as much on me. And after I um, use the stick blender, I will give you the formula for this. And I start with short bursts because it has a tendency, while it's so thin, to um, splash out. And as it gets thicker, you can you know, push, keep the button in longer.
and I'm going to bring it to at least a medium trace. Okay, we have reached a medium to thick trace. That only took just a couple of minutes. I didn't want to just keep you hanging on for that. <laughs> um, and I have to say, as I say quite often, this is my favorite look of the cook. I just, I just want to dive into this richness, this creaminess. And if you could smell the cocoa butter, oh my goodness, I just love that. So, my crock pot is on low. I'm going to cover it up and let it start to cook. I do not know how long to expect this to take this time because it's a brand new recipe for me. Um, I worked on it a little bit last night and um, decided on it this morning. So, my formula today is 10% castor, 25% cocoa butter. I almost went to 30 um, and I might next time, depends on how this works out. 10% coconut oil, 10% beef tallow, and 45% olive oil. So, which gave me numbers of, the hardness was 37, the cleansing is an eight, the conditioning is a 61, the bubbly is a 17, which, um, we all know we can boost that up um, with the milk and the um, honey that I'm going to add. Um, I'm going to be adding apple cider vinegar as well. So we'll get it up there. I have um, two tablespoons of honey over on the stove. And then a creamy of 38. Iodine is 62 and the INS number is 137. So, um, I'm hoping that it's going to be nice to work with um, and feel good on the skin with the low cleansing and the high conditioning. I have high hopes. Um, so, we will see how this works out. As I said, I have no idea how long to expect it to cook um, with the high olive oil and um, higher cocoa butter, but I, I don't think it'll be too too much different. I just, when you're trying something new, we just never know. So, um, I'm gonna just come back when it starts to cook a little long, more. Okay, it did start to volcano um, pretty quickly. So, <laughs> I, I reached for my stick blender because it is major separation. And I'm going to go ahead and try to bring it back together this way. And I'm cutting my crock pot off because it's hot enough. could use a whisk, but I, I think it's just entirely too separated for that. I'd wear my arm out. You can see how it's bubbling up. It's it's really cooking. A 
and that's with the crock pot turned off. better. And we have applesauce stage, soon to be mashed potatoes. The thermometer. It's just going to check the temperature for you. It's at 218. I'm going to take it out of the cooking unit and just allow it to finish without the added heat because it is hot. And I'll see you soon. Okay, well it's been a couple of minutes and it was separating again. So I had already put my stick blender away and um, I just decided to get out the whisk and, I mean, it wasn't major, just a little bit, but my temperatures are still really high um, at 208, so we're still cooking, and I expect any minute to just start seeing it transform over and finish the cooking. I was trying to think if there was, there's nothing really special about this. Like I said, it's just a test to see how much cocoa butter I can get in here and achieve some of that chocolatey, nutty smell. And Just kind of have a white chocolate and a dark chocolate theme. And it's getting ready to turn over into mashed potatoes completely. I'd be better off using my spatula. Okay, we finally <laughs> have um, mashed potato. That took about five minutes from where I cut you off. And it's actually really um, more Vaseline than mashed potato. So 
that was a little different. And um, I'm going to take out a little bit and do a zap test. Looks done, but never, never assume for your own safety as well as everyone else's. I'm going to get that a little spray of warm water to keep my sides clean. And um, we'll see what happens. All right, I'm ready to do my zap test. I have it on my um, popsicle stick my craft stick, whatever you call it, and it's cool, and I'm going to stick it to my tongue. Completely neutral, no zap whatsoever. Beautiful Vaseline. There's some controversy. Some people don't like doing the zap test. I've never te tested for lie any other way. Um, so you do whatever you feel comfortable with, whether it's the, the strips or the drops or the zap test, however you choose to, to test it. You know, everything that one soaper does is not for another. So you just need to do what makes you feel comfortable and safe. Okay, I have my warm additives um, right here. They've been keeping warm on the stove. The first thing I'm going to add is my melted down um, cocoa butter and my shea oil. And I smell the cocoa butter. have some that are deodorized and some that aren't. I use the wafers and the ones I added today are un non they're undeodorized, whatever you call it. Okay. Now I'm going to add my 2 ounces of coconut milk. It's been kept warm. And I withheld this from my lye liquid. And make sure you get it mixed in fairly to keep from getting cooked milk pieces. And my batter's hot, but it's not going to hurt me because there is no lye left, so I have on no gloves. It does give your arm a workout when it's this thick. Okay. Next thing I'm going to add is my yogurt, and that's two tablespoons. And it's at room temperature, still a little cool. And this is a two pound batch of soap. It's one tablespoon per pound of oil. Also needs to be mixed very fairly to keep from getting little cooked pieces. I do believe this is going to be a thick batter. It's thin down some, but it's still quite thick. Okay. Give it a little spray. It says that my temperature is only 158. It 
So I'm going to go ahead, that said 154, and add my two tablespoons of honey, my apple cider vinegar, and my sodium lactate, which are all in this little cup. And that's going to boost my lather and help to smooth things out and just wonderful for the skin. And I do smell the sweet smell of the cocoa butter, but not enough. I read somewhere where you can maybe add a little bit of orange essential oil and get more of a chocolatey smell with a large amount of cocoa butter. So I'm going to try it. This is my cup. I'm going to add in my chocolate. So I'm going to put a little bit in there and the rest in here. So I just want a little hint. That did turn out nice consistency. Okay, and in goes my oils and cocoa powder dissolved. We'll start with that and see what we get. And I'm just going to pour into the cup. Like I said, I don't want to overuse it because I don't want a lot of brown lather. Mm, smells nice. I do want a little more though. Well, I guess we'll use it all. Okay, get my mold here where you can see. up and start out with a layer of my base. Come in with a layer of, I don't think you can, my chocolate. Bang it down. Get any air bubbles out. Another layer of the natural.
the chocolate. this down. Now I'm going to take my chopstick, the, the large end. I don't know if you can see. And I'm going to start here and just go in circles. Turn it around and come back the other way. And that's all I do. I don't know what I'm, I never know what I'm going to get. Okay. Now I'm just going to take some of the different colors do something on the top and have a nice little bar for myself and I'll probably just do some little curly cues. Nothing spectacular. I like a little bit of a, a raised top, rough texture. They can be really pretty. And that's the way I'm going to leave it. And I'm going to pop it in the freezer for a few hours and I'll bring you back for the cut. Thank you. Hey, well, I'm back to cut um, my chocolate soap. Um, it's set up really fast, um, and I knew it was going to, um, by the way, my um, sample bar set up. Um, so um, I'm going to go ahead and cut it, and um, it's it smells really nice. I like the way this looks on this side. I hope we get good results in the middle from the chopstick swirl. So I'm going to cut off the end. It does smell kind of chocolatey, but it's it's hard sometimes to tell what something's going to smell like, at least I think, right away. So I am going to cut these a little bit chunkier just because I like chunky bars. There's that side. And there's that side. Well, that might be too chunky because they're taller. That's pretty. I 
I like doing the chopstick swirl. I have better results with that than I do with the hanger. I'm just not good at the hanger. That's pretty. And um, I was going to tell you as I was making the video when I got sidetracked. I'm, I'm trying to, I live in a very rural area. So sometimes, you know, I, I get it that if you charge more than $5 or five and a quarter, five fifty for a bar of soap in my area, it's more than some people can swing or want to. Um, so rather than go up on my soap and risk having to lose some of my customers, because I understand, um, you know, some people think that that's just too much to spend on a product that's on a bar of soap. I look at it as, you know, you're going to use it for probably a good month, if maybe more. So, but rather than lose my customers, I am going to, and because prices have gone up, so I'm going to reduce my number of oils. So that's why I'm using some that are two oils, I mean three oils, four, and probably five at the most, just so that I can still make a great bar of soap and my customers are able to still feel like they can afford it. I'd rather do that. And I've gotten some really good formulas by reducing them. That is so pretty. So that's why I'm doing some revamping. And um, I just want to be able to provide quality and still keep my loyals. But every soap maker has to do what's best for them. Well, I'm very happy. And I did do um, a lather test and was very happy um, that my lather wasn't overly brown, just barely a tinge. So that was good. Well, thank you for coming along and watching my soap video, and I'm going to be very pleased with this, I can already tell. And I was amazed uh, with the number 17 for the bubbly number at how lathery it really was. Um, and I know that was due to the additives. But anyway, I will post pictures and see you on the next video. Thanks for watching. Have a good evening.